Good evening, Erin. We'll, we'll start off uh, immediately with Jessica Porter and Sarah McDonald to welcome us from the Master Plan Committee co-chairs. Great. Thanks, Josh, and thanks um, to our entire MEPC team. It's great to see so many people here right now. I think we're at 113. Um, so it's we really appreciate everybody's willingness to engage in um, planning and community meetings, even in a time of pandemic. And appreciate you being willing to do Zoom um, as a next best thing to being in person. Um, just going to give you a quick overview of um, the Master Plan Committee. Um, so the master plan is something that the town has committed to do every 10 years. Um, and we take it seriously. The state actually asks us to do it every 10 years, but Dedham has gone beyond what many communities do in, um, in making a really distinct commitment to do so. And so we're really um, excited to be a part of the process right now that's designing the master plan for 2030. Um, the master plan is um, something that's initiated by the planning board, but we have really excited that um, our committee right now is this really strong, um, I'd say partnership between the planning board and the select board. And so we have several committee members, you can see their names here, who were all um, either representing different boards in town or um, chosen by the, the planning board or select board. And um, I just thought I'd give you a little bit of a sense of the last master plan as a way to explain what the master plan does. So it's really about thinking, you know, about Dedham's future um, and thinking about what's important to the community so that we can help um, guide decision-making in the future. And so our last master plan was in 2009. And some of the things that came out of that plan, um, just to give people a sense, is um, are things like some reorganization things. Um, you know, after that plan, we hired a facilities manager who would actually be in charge of looking at all of the community facilities in town. Um, zoning changes that um, East Dedham um, Arts Overlay District came out of that master plan, out of work that came out of that. Um, you know, identifying parcels um, for protection, coordinating with other communities for environmental protection. Um, also things like zoning reviews and um, one of at least my favorite topics, the town website. Actually, that was something that came out of the 2009 plan was that we needed to uh, work on our town website, which we did a few years ago and it already needs to be worked on again because that's how things change quickly these days. <laughs> um, so that's what the master plan does. I'm gonna hand it over to my co-chair, Sarah McDonald of the select board um, to take it from there, thanks. I echo Jessica's welcome to the now 115 people who have joined us and just wanted to um, briefly go over another piece that makes the master plan effort a little bit different than our regular sort of course of business with committees. And that's the fact that the master plan effort is um, by its design meant to be highly um, engaged and engaging for residents that really the document and the goals and the work product that come from the master plan process um, need to be informed by residents in every corner of town. And that's true um, every time we do the plan, but in particular, uh, because we launched uh, this plan shortly before the pandemic, it's something that this committee has taken very, very seriously, shifting to um, a really uh, all hands on deck effort to spread the word, to make sure we're thinking about ways to engage people, um, not just online, but through a variety of means, including um, some surveys we've done, the uh, lawn sign campaign that hopefully you've seen around town. Um, and then tonight, the first of what will be a series of open houses diving deeper into our subject area. So um, stay tuned. I think by the end, we'll share the, the information for the upcoming open houses, but um, please continue to share with your neighbors uh, these opportunities to have a say in how we envision Dedham 2030. All right, sorry, sorry about that. We had a little 
changeover of the host there, so I wasn't able to unmute myself, but I'm back now. So thank you, Jessica and Sarah, uh, very much uh, for that warm welcome. And thank you all for taking the time this evening to join us. I'd also like to extend a special thank you to the entire Master Plan Committee who's been working tirelessly with us uh, to advance the planning effort, uh, as well as Jeremy Rosenberger, Michelle Tinger, and uh, the rest of the town staff who are helping with the process as well. And in a uh, final additional special shout out to the outreach working group, who is a, a group of residents who are also helping us with the, the outreach for this effort. So we appreciate you all taking the time this evening. My name is Josh Fiala. I'm a principal planner at the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. I'm project manager, manager for this effort. And uh, first, we just wanna talk about a few housekeeping notes uh, with the presentation here. So as you've probably noticed, the meeting is being recorded. Uh, if you uh, do not consent to being recorded, you can keep yourself muted and uh, your video turned off for the duration of the session. Um, we would like people to keep muted uh, during the presentation so we can get through them and to avoid any feedback issues with the audio. You'll all get a chance to participate in the small group breakouts after the brief presentations. Uh, and you're invited to leave us questions in the chat or comments in the chat as we proceed and we'll record all of those uh, thoughts as we move along and, and think about them uh, beyond this meeting. So the purpose of our, our engaging you all this evening is to really introduce you to where we're at in two topics, economic development and transportation. And then the plan is to expand that over the coming weeks and months to all topics of the master plan and to invite you into the progress that is underway. Uh, by, by no means is that progress complete. This is a, a draft, uh, first, uh, first draft of where we're at with some initial goals in these topics. And we're doing this really to invite you into the conversation into molding that information so that it really fits with where the town is at and what you'd like to see happening over that 10 year period Jessica described. And we also want to uh, invite you to stay engaged with the process if you haven't been, and we'll, we'll tell you how to do that as we move along. So our agenda this evening, as Carolina said, is action packs. So we'll try to keep moving right along. We'll give a brief introduction as we have underway, and then we'll hand it off to Jen Kaplan to discuss economic development. We'll have a brief break in the middle with a, a raffle drawing, and then transportation and connectivity with uh, MAPC staff, Travis Pollock and Mara Holland, who will talk about transportation and connectivity with us. Then we'll have a final raffle drawing and talk about some next steps for this process. So a little bit about us, if you haven't heard about MAPC, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, we are the regional planning agency for the Boston metropolitan area. That obviously includes Dedham and we provide technical assistance to these 101 communities and we're happy to uh, have provided a fair amount of assistance recently with the town of Dedham and, and are happy to be here with you all this evening. So we have a, a wide range of, of staff across many disciplines, uh, all of the disciplines which are required to put together a master plan. So whether that be land use, transportation, public health, um, housing, uh, natural cultural historic resources and the like. So we have a full suite of our staff uh, which is a staff in total of around 100 uh, planners and other uh, professionals. And we're happy to have uh, a very robust suite of that staff available with us this evening. I'm, I'm going to forego due to time, uh, listing all the names of the MEPC staff who are involved with us this evening, but you can see them in the participants and we're very thankful for them taking the time this evening. So early on in the process, the committee uh, drafted these values and expectations to help guide the conversations of their meetings. And we'd invite you to follow these uh, words and phrases in our conversations tonight as we get into the breakout rooms, especially. So think about being open-minded, respecting what other people are saying, addressing conflict if there is any. Uh, hopefully we're providing you with the organized setting for that, which is transparent and goal-minded. And then we're also thinking about respecting history without fearing change. So enough, enough about us in this introduction. We would re really love to know who the participants are, are who are out there. Looks like we have 124 with us right now. So we have a few uh, audience polls, which we'd like to share with you, um, which in my current setting, Carolina, I actually don't see. So I might have to ask you to share the poll. So we'd like to ask um, 
a few questions which get you uh, to help us understand who, who you are. So just brief, briefly, if you wouldn't mind, if you're comfortable with letting us know, what neighborhood do you live in? And you can just click uh, that uh, window which has popped up on your screen and select the neighborhood that you live in. And then also uh, what your age is, what gender you identify with, what race you identify with, how you learned about the meeting, and if you've participated in previous master plan meetings. So it helps us to know who is with us this evening, but it also helps us to know who is not with us this evening. And as we're continuing this process, um, it helps us to understand if there are um, populations which we're missing, uh, ways that we can improve the outreach and engagement. So this is all helpful information. So if you could enter that in, and then we can briefly share the results. I'm scrolling through the screens now, so if maybe people give a thumbs up or a wave if you've had ample time to put that information in. Looks like I'm getting some waves and thumbs up as I scroll through some of these videos. Perfect. So it looks like Carolina, we can close that survey now and maybe take just a minute to allow people to see uh, the results of it so you can see who's, who's out there, who are your fellow residents. Thank you so much for that. So it looks like Oakdale is well represented, but we also have um, good representative representation across all neighborhoods. So it's good to see that we've got uh, some residents from all, all corners of the town. Uh, we have the age range, which is best represented is 50 to 64, but we also have uh, some representatives in all the age groups, except for those uh, who would identify as teenagers, so zero to 18. So we have, we have been reaching out to the youth uh, in particular with that. We had a youth focus group over the summer, which was very successful. Uh, what gender do you identify with? It's about almost half, uh, 57 female, 57% female, 43% male. And then uh, what race and ethnicity do you identify with? 93% white is the leading category, followed by 4% black or African-American, 2% Hispanic or Latino, and 1% two or more races. People are learning about the meeting through Facebook uh, foremost, followed by word of mouth and the email newsletter or other sources. And it looks like a little more than half of you have participated in previous master plan meetings. So we appreciate that and thank you so much. And we invite the almost other half of you to join us at one of the future meetings and, and keep coming out and being a part of this process. So thank you for that, that uh, helps us uh, a lot as we continue to try to keep this a well-balanced and engaging process that's representative across the town. So I just wanted to give a brief introduction if you're not familiar with the master plan to fill in a little bit on what Jessica and Sarah provided in their introduction. So we are um, working sort of pretty methodically topic by topic to um, both look at each topic in depth, uh, but also to think about them as a collection uh, to uh, form a vision for the town, where the town's headed over the next 10 years. Uh, and you can see the topics on the screen there. Each topic in the end will result with topic goals, strategies, and actions and implementation plan to uh, give details on how each of those strategies and goals will be accomplished. And all of that is being coordinated and will feed back up into an overall vision statement for where the town is headed over the, those, that 10 year period. Um, so we're, in, we're kind of in the midst of that, rolling up our sleeves tonight in economic development and transportation and hope to uh, cover each of the master plan topics uh, with you in a setting such as this evening's. So in, in addition to uh, meetings such as this one, and uh, we had a virtual visioning session back in April, which had a, a also very good attendance. Uh, we had two surveys which were released uh, in the spring, late spring, early summer, each of which gathered quite a few responses. Uh, un unique responses across the two of them were over 1,450. 
Uh, so that is a very good foundation, which we've been leaning upon uh, to uh, understand where you're at with, with the town of Dedham, what you're thinking, what you see as an impossible in, in place to improve or a possible place to uh, change direction or keep the same. So uh, this has provided us with a wealth of information which we're building uh, each of these topic areas and ideas from. Just one tiny example from that wealth of information is on the screen now. So we asked people, how close is Dedham to the vision you imagine for the town? And it looked like people were um, in that neighborhood where they don't necessarily need to see um, a dramatic overhaul that I, Dedham is far from their ideal vision for the town. That was only 6%. But most people are falling in the middle categories where they either see the need for some minor improvements or some major improvements. And so that's the, the scale and magnitude uh, that we're trying to get, uh, get right in thinking about all these different topic areas. Uh, and, and so making some potentially some bold moves or some transformative recommendations, but then also just uh, sort of cleaning up some things that need to be cleaned up. And in, in addition to the open houses uh, that we have uh, this e starting this evening, and then we'll have one also in January and in March, we've been discussing with the master plan committee each of these topic areas uh, since July and are in the, about the middle of that process. And we invite anyone to join us. Those are posted in public meetings uh, that anyone can, can uh, be a part of. And we'll continue uh, previewing the information in those meetings and then bringing that information forward to the, the broader public in these open house settings. Um, next meeting will be focused on three new topics and then the, follow, the following and final meeting would be focused on the last three. We're about at the midpoint through this process. So we have uh, one year in total um, left to go. We uh, have been at this for about a year now. Um, and the next thing, once we get a feel for where the overall goals are for each of the topic areas, we'll really start in the spring uh, to uh, develop full draft sections uh, for each of the topics. And then in the fall, or, you know, refining that information over the summer, uh, probably having some more opportunities which need to be specified and we'll figure out what, what best, the best way to do that given the context of virtual meetings or not virtual meetings, um, engaging with you all. And then we'll have a draft plan which can be reviewed in detail uh, at some point in the fall and then wrapping that up as we get to this time next year. So if you haven't seen this uh, information, please do mark on your calendars January 26th is the second of these installments of open houses. And then March 30th is the final of the three uh, part series. And you can see the topics which will be covered on January 26th, housing, public health and livability, and the natural cultural historic resources, and then rounded out on the 30th of March by land use, municipal facilities and services and governance. And that forms uh, all the major topic areas of the master plan and will give us uh, great feedback for, for where we're at in drafting these initial goals. The website, uh, which is designingdedham2030.org is a repository of all the information that we've done and, and had throughout this process. We have um, posted recordings of nearly every meeting that's taken place, the presentations which were given, uh, meeting notes and, and lots of other information so if you're interested, you can take a deep dive into that website. We'll be continuously updating the website with information as we continue with this process. So hopefully that gives you a feel for uh, where we are, uh, where we've been and where we're headed in this process. They are uh, labors of love. They're, they're, they require a lot of participation and we appreciate uh, the record turnouts that we've been seeing uh, across the Dedham community and, and keep, keep that going. Um, we will, I've, I've seen some messages on my side of things here. We will share the poll results that we got this evening uh, on the website and, and be producing uh, notes from this evening as well. So uh, with that, uh, what we'd like to do is not waste any more time with the uh, general introduction and really carve out as much time as possible for the topics of this evening. So I will hand it across to Jen Kaplan of MAPC, Economic Development Planner here. 
uh, to take us through economic development. Thank you, Josh. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Jen Kaplan, as Josh introduced me, and I'm an economic development planner with MAPC. And I am just, I'm so excited to be here tonight. And I really appreciate all of you showing up tonight. Um, economic development, as you can imagine, is one of my favorite topics. But what you don't know is my second favorite topic is transportation. And that's because they really are so intertwined. Um, so I'm going to be walking you through a brief presentation today of um, what we have heard so far and what we have seen so far in terms of economic development and how that's informed our um, current draft goals. Um, and as Josh walked you through the process, a lot of this is going to sound quite familiar. Um, it's because of all of you who have participated so far through community surveys, meetings, interviews, that we have been able to get to this point and understand what is important to Dedham and to echo what Jessica early, earlier said, um, what's important to the community and Dedham's future. So some of the themes that we have seen so far, and you'll see reflected in our draft goals tonight, of which there are five, um, is supporting small businesses, investing in workforce opportunities, and enhancing access to some key district areas, all in the name of planning for opportunity, planning for growth. Um, so without further ado, um, I want to dive right into our five draft goals. Um, and again, these are draft, like Josh said, this is a conversation, right? We're still at this point where these are in draft form. We want to hear from you what you think of these goals. Um, we're going to be breaking into small group discussions right after my brief presentation. And I encourage you all to share that feedback then and also be sharing in the chat as I go. Um, so our five draft goals that I want to talk about tonight are investing in local business districts, building a support system for small businesses, people who work in Dedham can live in Dedham, a little bit of tense change there, support and expand industrial job opportunities and enhancing route one connections. So I'm going to go through these one by one of why we why these are included in the draft goals and just some of the data that backs that up. Thanks, Josh. Um, so the first goal that we have here is investing in local business districts. Um, so Dedham has a lot of opportunity areas, um, economic development areas, areas of increased employment. Um, and then there's also these local business districts that are strategically placed throughout the town of which there are 11. Um, they're areas that are not have not traditionally been areas of dense employment. However, there is an opportunity thinking about the fact that small business retention is very important to you as a community and also job growth. Um, so in these neighborhood nodes that contain these local business districts um, in areas, I'm thinking of places like Riverdale and also um, parts of East Dedham included in the Arts Overlay District. Is there an opportunity to be thinking of them as areas of local economic development? And as we go further into the presentation, you'll also hear me talk about access and how that's a key theme throughout this entire presentation. So if we think about in, if we think about investment in these local business districts that now you see on this map, thanks Josh, um, is there also a chance to be thinking about infrastructure that supports economic development of these areas? Um, so if we can go on to the next one. I um, have to get through all five. So our second um, draft economic development goal is to be thinking about a support system for small businesses. So again, over and over again, in the community surveys, we heard that small businesses are important to you. The areas that contain small businesses feel like home. Um, so thinking of areas like Dedham Square, East Dedham Square, how can you be, how can the town be thinking about sustainable commercial revenue and increased support of small businesses in these central districts? Um, I'm not gonna go through all the strategies today because we could literally have an entire meeting dedicated to that, but this might start to look like technical assistance. Um, is it creating a chamber? Um, and this is important because small businesses in Dedham actually make up 88% of total businesses. Um, that's businesses that are one to 49 employees, what we traditionally classify as small. Um, they also make up 55% of that revenue. And um, I don't have this up there, but I think 
Even more interestingly, within those one to 49 employee businesses, 57% of those have one to five employees. Um, so we're thinking of those really small micro enterprises. Um, and what kind of businesses they are, it really does vary from area to area, but we've seen a lot of density of lawyers, real estate agents, but also those full service restaurants. And thinking about also where we are with the pandemic, I don't think we can leave that out of the conversation. Small businesses have been impacted um, heavily, we know across the board. And so as the town moves forward in the master plan, how can they be thinking about increased technical assistance for small businesses, um, the kind of support they would need in order to continue to call Dedham home. Um, and can we please go on to the next slide, please? Um, the third goal that we have is people who work in Dedham can live in Dedham. Um, so we heard in the community survey that the community is very interested in job opportunities in Dedham. From our data, we also understand that a majority of people who work in Dedham also don't live in Dedham. Um, of the about 31,000 or so people who are part of the workforce in Dedham, 17,000 um, work in Dedham but live outside of Dedham. So can we create more workforce opportunities um, for Dedham residents? Um, but in order to do that, can we also be thinking about the current wage gap? So currently in Dedham, actually, Josh, if we can move forward one, um, the, a few of the most employed industries are healthcare and social assistance, as well as retail trade. And this chart here actually shows what it looks like if you were to live and work in Dedham in these industries. The median rent in Dedham is about $2,092. And if you pay more than 30% of your income, you are cost burdened. Um, so you can see that if you have finance, if you work in finance and insurance, you can live pretty comfortably. However, if you are part of the retail trade or healthcare and social assistance trade, or even the accommodation and food services, you are paying a lot of your income or you're literally priced out of the town. So as we move forward and be thinking about workforce opportunities um, and workforce development programs, can they be, can we also be addressing the wage gap? Um, if we can move forward one slide, please, Josh. Um, and also this slide here, I just put in for good measure to sort of share some of the feedback that we saw as some of the most important challenges facing the town in terms of economic development. Um, and that is, again, people found the access to good jobs being incredibly important, maintaining a sustaining commercial, sustainable commercial tax base. Um, the fourth goal is supporting and expanding job, industrial job opportunities. So Dedham has a really unique opportunity in its industrial arm. I'm thinking mainly of the Milton Industrial Corridor area um, in that there is a pretty competitive industrial base as far as we understand looking at real estate metrics. Um, and also there is this desire for increased workforce development opportunities. Um, so is there an opportunity to be rethinking current land use um, and how to, and, and change, changing that to promote industrial business development. Um, if we can move forward just one slide. Um, so we pulled in some numbers looking at the Route 1 South submarket, um, which includes Canton, Dedham, Norwood, Stoughton, and Westwood, and compare that to the Boston Metro market. Um, so that's really the greater Boston area. And you can see that the industrial land within the Boston Route 1 South submarket, including areas like Dedham, are quite competitive, perhaps compared to some other areas like the office market. Um, and finally, um, our fifth draft goal is enhancing Route 1 connections and opportunities. Um, so this is actually a twofold goal here, thinking really about the question of what does the future look like? What does that vision include? And overwhelmingly on the community survey, we heard from folks, you really love Route 1 and it's how convenient it is, right? There's a ton of amenities on Route 1 that you can use, whether it's you're going to Legacy Place or you're going to Lowe's. Um, but it's hard to access if you do not have a car. Um, so thinking about the future of Route 1, can there be increased modes of um, transit, walking, and biking access, making it really an even better amenity for Dedham residents? But also it's an area of increased employment. Um, here we've pulled in 
some density values around employment. And you can see overwhelmingly that Route 1 does have a lot of jobs. Um, and so thinking about those jobs, thinking about opportunities um, for access moving forward. And finally, I want to just add a little another layer here, thinking about the future of commercial and retail. Our big box store is going to be around forever. Um, I pose that question actually to all of you and I would love to hear your thoughts. I think we're seeing more and more that online retail has taken over. Um, so if route one um, going to look like route one, 10 years from now? And if not, what do you want to see on Route 1? And how can we plan for that? How can we plan for access to those areas of Route 1? So I know that was a lot of information thrown at once. Um, and I think there's already some questions in the chat, which I appreciate. Um, but just to recap, these are our five goals investing in local business districts, building a support system for small businesses building opportunities for people who to work in Dedham to also live in Dedham, support and in expanding industrial job opportunities and enhancing Route 1 connections. Um, so I believe we have a Zoom poll at this time, Josh. Oh, Zoom chat, great, okay, I love it. Um, so I invite all of you to ask in the, to answer in the chat, what was, oh, is this for after the discussion? Josh. Sorry, I still am having trouble unmuting myself, unfortunately. <laughs> no worries. Um, so hopefully we'll get that fixed on our side. This is for after the breakout sessions, yes. And Got so it. we, at this moment, what we're going to do is actually uh, take, Maybe I'll pause for a brief second and ask Jen back to you if you could clarify the 3.4 billion number that we had on a slide. Uh, do we think that is an accurate number or maybe off? Uh, maybe it should be in the millions. There is a chance it should be in the millions. And I appreciate whoever caught that. Thank you. Okay. So um, but I will also double check on my sources and get back to you about that. We'll double check that number. And, and yes, it, we, we've had the discussion about uh, Route 1, Providence Highway, uh, VFW Parkway, all of those uh, naming conventions for our roadways. And yes, what we are referring to is the Providence Highway. So uh, with, with those clarifications, we will, at this point, we want to give uh, as much time as possible to the breakout discussion. So you'll be invited uh, in a smaller group to react to what you've just heard. We have about 25 minutes for those groups, and then we'll return and follow the same pattern for the transportation topic. Uh, the, your small group discussion will be facilitated by one of either MAPC staff, a co-chair, or a town staff member. And so we uh, will join those rooms now. Carolina, I invite you to send us away, and then we'll reconvene and have some uh, conclusions from the, the breakout discussion. Feel free to accept those around. We'll see you in 25. We'll just make sure everybody is able to get into their room and we'll double check to make sure if you haven't been assigned, I'll be sure to do that. Um, and Dedham TV, you're gonna hang with me in the breakouts. So go ahead and um, choose to join the room and we'll see you in 25 minutes. If you're having any issues, let, let me know. So it looks like folks are still joining. Um, so what you want to do is make sure that you um, say join breakout room and it'll take you to the breakout section. If you're having issues, let me know. Hi, Mari, are you having issues? You, um, there were like five facilitators in one breakout room. It was me, Travis, Emma, and a bunch of other people. Lovely, okay, that's not what we did. <laughs> um, let me move. Uh, 
is assigning four. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So Travis, uh, let me see if I can find you guys since you're back here. Are you going to sign me somewhere else or am I going to stay here? It says that. No, Travis, you should have been to, but I'm trying to find your name. Okay. That's why. Um, can you give me a second, please? I'm trying to find you. Are you allowed um, the room? Like to join the room that you were in? I'm sorry, I'm having audio problems, Carolina. Couldn't hear. Okay. Are you are you able to join the room that you were in? I can reassign you oh. if you go back to where you were. So I need to, to go join to the, where you were. Yeah. What what room should I go to? Um, you should go to the one that's titled um, your name, Travis. Oh, okay. I'll try that. <laughs> Let me see if I can do that. Mara, if you can do that, if you can, yours is named Mara and Shaw. So you should um, be able it, to read. It looks like I'm assigned is to break line? Emma and Justin. Yeah, me too. It says I'm, I'm assigned to Emma and Justin as well. Can you guys go there and I can try to move you, please? Okay. Because I sure. can't see your name. I can't see your name when you're not in the room. So I'm gonna try to find you when you guys go in there. Where were you supposed, you said Justin? Okay. Um,
Larry or Giovanna, do you need to be assigned rooms or are you having issues? You just um, put it in the chat if you're having issues. Let me know. And if Dedham TV is on, um, would love to hear. If you guys are doing um, okay. If you need any assistance, let me know. So Larry and Giovanna, are you able to join a group? Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Everybody's in a breakout room. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to assign you to a breakout room. We are gonna be talking right now about economic development. Um, so I'm going to assign you now from that. So you should be able to click on somebody um, on joining the breakout group. Just let me know in the chat if you're not able to do that. Hi everybody, thank you for joining. If you're just um, joining us now, um, you should be able to join one of the breakout rooms. So if you should just be able to click on join breakout room and be able to join. We are covering the economic development portion of the event. So please let me know if you have having issues. So I'm gonna assign you to a room. So feel free to join the room that I assign you. You can just click them and um, you'll be able to join. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Julia signing you now. So you should be able to join Elaine and Josh. Lawrence also assign you. So feel free to join Travis. And Chris, I'm going to assign you as well.
Hi, James, Danielle and Lindsay, Giovanna, thank you for being here. I'm going to assign you to the breakouts. Um, so you should be able to join. You can just say join Gabby, chatting with you all soon. Hi, Eric, thank you for being here. I'm going to assign you to a breakout room. We're in a breakout session right now. And we have about 10 more minutes in our breakout session. Lindsay, I'm going to let you in. Thank you for joining. Lindsay, I'm going to assign you to a breakout session. Danielle, Lindsay, Lawrence, Giovanna, let me know if you have any issues. Join breakout session. Hi, Giovanna. I'm just gonna ask you to, I just asked you to unmute. I just wanna make sure that you're able to get assigned. So can you let me know what's the issue? I asked both of you. Lawrence, I also asked you to unmute. So just let me know. Um, I'd love to hear if what issues you're having so I can help you out here. Lawrence, let me know if I can help with anything. I did ask to unmute if you accept to chat with me and let me know what's going on. Lawrence, let me know if I can be helpful to you or Giovanna. We're in the breakout sessions right now. So we are in the breakout sessions for five minutes. Um, so would love to hear if you need support. Um, Giovanna and Lawrence, let me know if I can help you get into any conversation. Um, I did assign you to a room, so do let me know if you're not able to join. You can write in the chat and let me know if you have any issues.
Hey, Dedham TV, let me know if you need anything or uh, need any support. Feel free to use the chat. I also, um, you're happy to, you're, feel free to unmute as well. If you're just hanging out, no worries. No, so we are only halfway through. So there's going to be another presentation in about five minutes. Um, and once we come back, everybody will come back to the group. Um, and then um, we'll have another uh, presentation on transportation and have people be able to have a discussion in the breakouts again. So feel free to hang tight until we um, have the next presentation in about four minutes. Awesome. Thanks for joining. So Giovanna, uh, let me know if I can help you or Lawrence, um, if you're able to join, I did assign you to a room. So you should be able to, to join. Um, if you're having difficulties with that, it may be that um, you need to upgrade your Zoom account um, to, to the latest version. Looks like Lindsay's back as well. Let's see here. So hi, Lindsay. Hi, Marianne. We are about to wrap up in about three minutes for in our breakout room. So I'm just going to um, quickly assign you. Bruce, thank you for joining us. We are in a breakout room, so I'm going to quickly assign you. Um, and we're talking about the economic development um, breakout session. So feel free to uh, join the breakout session and we'll see you in a little bit. Excellent. So we'll be back in one more minute. Lawrence and Giovanna, feel free to message me if you're still having issues. Um, we are going to do a second breakout. Room. So I uh, would love for you all to be able to uh, participate on that. Um, so do let me know if I can be helpful in any way with that. Okay. And we definitely appreciate you all being here. No worries, Giovanna. I just wanted to make sure uh, that you were still with us. Everyone's coming back in about 30 seconds. So um, hang tight because uh, we're going to be returning to the big group. And then we're going to do the presentation and debrief on the um, 
we're going to do a, a presentation on transportation. So you are you are right on time. Just let us know if you have any like additional questions, okay? Yeah, thank you so much. I know the Zoom meetings, it's like every single Zoom meeting, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was actually responsible for that meeting, so I had to. <laughs> <laughs> you like have to be have to be present okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna actually mute because i know lots of folks are coming back and um i'm going to let everybody back in okay and i appreciate you um joining this video it's nice to see you <laughs> all right everyone thank you so much i hope you had a great discussion in your breakout room I know we did have a little bit of staff with some people getting sent to wrong room, so we'll definitely be on it for the next one. I hope the conversation was fruitful. Um, and as people are joining, I know that um, we really want to just have a reflection uh, moment as well. So thank you so much for, for um, joining us. Excellent. So as people are joining, I know that Jen, Jen Kaplan, I know you wanted to give a little bit of a debrief or comment on your main session and breakout. So um, feel free to share as people are joining back into the chat and the room. And, and we do also, Carolina, in addition to Jen offering us some concluding comments on this topic, we have a poll, uh, which we'd like to invite you all to participate in again which is, um, do you feel the set of draft economic development goals is about right for the master plan? And then you can let us know if it's very close, close, neutral, not close, way off, or none of the above. Um, and that, you know, have it be a reflection of your, your discussion, how you're feeling about uh, things. So Jen, I'll, I'll hand it to you maybe for some closing words before we turn it to transportation. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Carolina. Um, and I really appreciate my group um, for providing plenty of food for thought. Um, and it's really interesting to see these poll results come in as well. Um, before I just give concluding thoughts, again, I just want to, I can't stress enough that this is a one point in time. Um, please continue to provide feedback. It will be incredibly helpful to our process as we work towards a final set of draft recommendations of recommendations for economic development. Um, so I think some concluding thoughts and some you know, certainly some discussion that took place in my group um, was definitely around small businesses and believe it or not, um, access and transportation. Um, what, how does, what does it look like currently to be getting to um, central business districts, local business districts? Um, we had some conversations about um, what it looks like to be supporting sort of the tertiary small business centers, namely the local business districts that we talked about in goal one, um, but also supporting some of the bigger employers of Dedham, um, the ones who certainly can close that wage gap as well that we discussed in terms of, I believe it's goal three. Um, so that was just my group. I encourage you to drop some thoughts in the chat because I would love to see those. Um, and we're, going to be looking at all of this as we work towards a set of recommendations. So thank you, everybody. Been a great group. Great. Thank, thank you, Jen. I, I agree and applauding everyone for making this, uh, making our job a little easier. It's always tough to get, get, you know, we don't know how people are going to react to these meetings, but you are doing an awesome job. So uh, thank you so much. Let's uh, reward ourselves with a little stretch break and hand it over to Michelle. Uh, to give us a brief inter interlude to do a raffle drawing. Thank you, Josh. So I want to take a moment to just thank everyone. Um, it's uh, going to be a pretty long, uh, informative meeting. So if you all want to take a second, just to kind of stretch out, feel free to stand up, shake your, shake your legs out. So what I'm going to do is um, share my screen over here. And we're going to be holding a raffle. So we're going to be picking two winners tonight. Um, first winner will be winning uh, a gift card from Santoro Sicilian Trattoria. And the next one from Brick House Cafe. So I'll be turning up my screen. We can drum roll if you want to. Make it a little, a little exciting. <laughs> Do you 
Havana. So I am going to be messaging uh, both of the winners uh, just to let you know, just to get in touch with you uh, and send you your gift card for Santori uh, Santoro Sicilian Trattoria. And for our lucky winner, number two, Brick House Cafe, another drum roll. Kate O'Halloran. Again, I'm going to be messaging both of you just to get contact information. That way we can send you your gift card for the Brick House Cafe. So thank you guys so much. Great, thank you, Michelle. That's uh, awesome. So we'll take our, our little break with renewed energy and dive into our next topic with Travis Pollock and Mara Holland on transportation. And if I can find my screen again, I will share. All right, looks like we are back. And uh, there was a raffle break. So I hand it off to Travis. Thanks, Josh. Um, I'm actually gonna start. All right. um, and thank you, Jen, for that great segue. Um, so we're gonna talk about transportation and connectivity. And I think it'll be a great um, build off from Jen's presentation about um, accessing a lot of these small businesses and spaces and thinking about the connections that exist between our businesses and our homes. So do you want to go next, Josh? Thanks. So from the, the existing conditions data that we collected, as well as the survey data that we received from many, many of you, we came up with three general themes for transportation and connectivity. Um, one was enhanced mobility and connectivity, which included um, a lot of folks talking about wanting better walking and cycling in Dedham, as well as a lot of concern about the increase in traffic congestion um, in town. There were also some themes around safety, especially for the most vulnerable um, road users in Dedham, as well as um, the need for better regional connections into Boston and other uh, neighboring towns and cities around the region. So at the moment we have six draft goals. And as Jen mentioned, these are draft right now. So we would love your feedback on these, um, whether you like them, you don't like them, you want them changed slightly, we'd love to hear it um, in the breakout rooms or in the chat. Um, so our first one is build and improve pedestrian and bike infrastructure. Number two is focus on street safety. Three is manage parking. Uh, four is increase transit reliability. Five is plan for electric and autonomous vehicles. And six is improve project implementation. So our first draft goal, um, this was something that we heard a lot from folks that um, both walkability and bikeability um, really needed to improve in Dedham and folks were interested in using these modes to get around for either short or long trips. Um, and what we found out from our existing conditions was 42% of the town road, streets and roads uh, do not have a sidewalk on at least one side. Um, and there's very little or no off street bike lanes in Dedham on or off street, excuse me. Um, and from the survey that we did, sidewalk and bicycle infrastructure was identified as most important for transportation. And then traffic congestion was also very high for folks as listed as an important thing to address. Ride hail, such as um, those are like Uber and Lyft, people getting those ride hail um, services, as well as the growth in traffic um, can possibly be met through more walking and biking connections. Um, so this is a um, word cloud from the survey that we did. And we asked folks, what is your top priority for Dedham in the next 10 years? Um, and you can see as one of the major things here, um, walkability was one of the biggest things that people said. And we heard that in my breakout group too, that a lot more folks wanted the ability to walk to places within Dedham. 
Um, there's also some rail trail, housing, um, transportation. You can kind of see some of these other words that are really standing out to folks um, who took our denim survey. Um, street safety was another thing that we found um, looking through our existing conditions and through the survey was a really big priority for a lot of folks in Dedham. Um, there were a lot of ped and bike crashes. Um, of all of them, 60% involved pedestrians and 40% involved cyclists. Um, half of the pedestrian crashes were in locations without sidewalks and all of the cyclist crashes were in areas without bike, proper bike infrastructure. Um, and a huge majority of these collisions resulted in injuries, whether they be fatal or non-fatal to pedestrians or cyclists. So here you can see a crash in vehicle clusters map. So the, um, the pink triangle is pedestrian crashes. The orange circle is pedocyclist. I think they mean pedal cyclist there. So people who are like riding pedal bikes um, the blue square is other. And then if you look at the green square, those are vehicle crash clusters. So you can see where there's been a number of vehicle crashes in one location. Um, and then the light, the sort of teal blue is environmental justice populations, an area that we definitely want to make sure um, the walkability and bikeability is safe in those particular areas. Um, so this is from one of, from the survey that we did. So on most days, how satisfied are you with the ease of travel in Dedham? And if you look at the top one there, that's uh, where folks are most dissatisfied. And the blue is that most is saying that most people are dissatisfied by travel by bicycle in Dedham, followed by travel by walking, and then very close third is travel by transit within Dedham. And then you can see that most people are satisfied by travel by car, truck, or motorcycle because um, that does seem to be the easiest way to get around Dedham at the moment. So the third draft goal that we have is better manage parking in Dedham. Um, so there, from what we've seen, there's a lot of parking at some of these larger box stores that are not always utilized. Um, and there's a lot of demand for parking in places like Dedham Square that if better managed, um, we could have more cars coming in and out um, and have more people, which would mean more people coming in and out um, to be able to utilize um, some of the businesses that are in these spaces, especially the small businesses, as Jen mentioned. Um, so some of these parking management strategies could be meters, could be, um, and some of those can be regulated based on time. If there's a, um, times of the day that are more popular, we can increase the prices, things like that. Um, we can also think about having specific spaces for deliveries and pickups. Um, or drop off for like ride hail for Uber and Lyft. Um, we could also repurpose excess parking spaces. Um, Josh, if you could just go back one. Thanks. Um, so some of those spaces that have excess parking could potentially be used for placemaking. Maybe it's a farmer's market. Maybe it's like an outdoor exercise area. Maybe it's a place to teach kids how to ride a bike. Um, these could also be pick up or drop off areas. Um, or areas for deliveries as well. Um, so this top photo is an area where there was a, it's one of the mall areas in Dedham. And then this bottom um, photo is from Washington Street in Dedham Square. Um, so you can see that on the top, there's a lot of excess parking up there that could potentially be repurposed either temporarily or permanently. Um, and then on the bottom, um, there's a lot of this parking is currently used, but if it were um, regulated in a different way, um, there might be more opportunity for that to turn over and more folks to be able to come in um, and utilize some of those spaces to um, go to restaurants or small businesses. Um, and now I'm gonna turn it over to Travis, um, who's gonna talk about the next three draft goals. Thanks, Mara. So the next goal we have, number four, is increased transit reliability. And uh, I know that, you know, right now with the pandemic and with COVID-19 going on, uh, probably people are, a lot more people are working from home. Uh, there might be fewer people going into Boston or going into the, to the office. Uh, and so you know, you're thinking about, well, but we still need to realize that um, once, thing, once things return to more normal, uh, which we hope soon, 
that probably traffic will pick up again and there will be people going, you know, that will be coming and going via uh, transit or other ways. So when we looked at the, the data on the Route 34 bus uh, by MBTA, it was rated as really important for connectivity. So the MBTA recently, a couple of years ago, did um, a study where they looked at the importance of all the bus routes and 34, 34E is really important for connectivity because of what it does in terms of connecting a lot of communities uh, in Long Beach, um, the, uh, both in Dedham and then further out. So we'll show a map here in a second, but it's along um, basically Washington Street. It kind of parallels Route 1. And then uh, for those that, um, in the, for the commuter rail ridership, it's gone up and it's almost doubled between when they did the counts in 2012 to 2018. So right now it's down, of course, but uh, beforehand it was really, really increasing. And one of the things that's really important, I think that Jen talked about earlier, was that there's a lot of people that come into Dedham for work. And so we have over 17,000 people that commute into Dedham. And what was interesting is that the proximity to Boston was noted as a town asset. So people really like the fact that in Dedham, you can get to places such as Boston. It's close to Boston. It's also close to other things, uh, other towns you know, nearby that are, that are important for jobs and other activities. Next slide. So this one shows the Route 34, and it's maybe a little hard to see, but basically the big circle on top is the uh, is where the Route 34 ends at Forest Hills uh, or thereabouts. And then what you see is that as this bus goes out south um, along this, it uh, in terms of where it goes. And what you can see here a little bit is the um, part in Dedham, right Route 128, is that it's Dedham is a really important connector for everything uh, in terms of like jobs, you can see that kind of if you're going from the south north, they're actually right as you enter Dedham is where a lot more activity on the 34, both people getting on and off, uh, happens. And so really Dedham is, is not just a place where people get on the bus to maybe go to Forest Hills and then go to Boston, but it's a place where people get off the bus, maybe people who are coming out from, uh, from uh, Boston area and coming out. So the 34 is a very important route, and so we need to make sure that um, the reliability of this route is is, is improved so that people can get to the places and connect with businesses and, and other um, other destinations. Right. So this map shows the uh, where people who live in Dedham where they go to work based upon census data of surveys. And so as you can see there, Dedham, there's those clusters right around Route One where Jen was talking about the jobs, but then you'll also notice the clusters in some of the neighboring communities. And then into the Boston area, where 32% of people from Dedham commute to Boston and about 10% within Dedham. So you can see why the proximity of Boston, it, you can see it's a real asset, but it also shows that why the, the transit connectivity is really important because people need to get into places that are connected, that, are, that can be connected to transit, such as the Longwood area um, up in Boston, the Back Bay, and of course the financial district in the main downtown part of Boston. So. That map shows just really how important it is to um, be connected uh, both to Boston and elsewhere when you're in Dedham. In terms of number five um, goal, we have plan for electric and autonomous vehicles. So uh, I think people are pretty familiar with electric vehicles. They're becoming more and more um, uh, out there on the streets and prevalent. So there are currently incentives that the state and others offer for charging stations that can be done uh, in areas, perhaps some of that parking that was mentioned earlier in terms of reusing the space. We need to make sure that it's planned for so people charge their vehicles. Um, we also need to think though about the parking management as Mara was talking about. Um, autonomous vehicles eventually will come along and they'll be, we'll have to think about parking really in a different way. Uh, the autonomous vehicles will probably just drop people off and then they'll go out and they'll be circling, perhaps looking for another ride or picking someone up. And so it won't happen tomorrow, but we need to start thinking about what that means for our streets and how the street space is used and how our parking space is used. And as Jen talked about, um, also in terms of the deliveries, uh, we are seeing a real increase in e-commerce. The fact that we've been doing some research at MAPC, currently about 16 to 18% of all retail is done with um, online and e-commerce. And yet we're already seeing the impacts on our streets. So when that increases, let's say to 25% or more, and it will, what would be the impacts on our streets? And we need to start thinking about that now in terms of like the space, where will the deliveries be? Where will those deliveries occur? And um, how, does, how do we just make your good of our space on our streets 
and even our parking for that. Uh, people more and more are doing what we call click and collect. They buy stuff, they go out online, and they go to the store to pick it up for the curbside pickup, especially now with the pandemic. And then finally, um, improving the project implementation is really important. Um, this is something we identified, we saw that, and this is not unique to Dedham, we've seen this in other communities too. So how can we identify funding opportunities, such as complete streets and the trails um, with shared streets and spaces? Review the plans and uh, that are out there in terms of like a repaving plan, and find out if there's places that can be done where we can, you know, redo the streets for more biking, biking and walking. Um, perhaps create an implementation committee. We've seen other communities have done that where they have a plan and a, there's a, a local citizens implementation committee that really goes through that plan and says, this year we're going to try to do this and this. And, you know, and, they, and then they, they work at it to try to get things done and break down those silos. Uh, I think we've seen it where, you know, maybe there's ways for different committees to work together, different departments to work together working with the communities that are also next uh, in, you know, nearby to see what they're doing in terms of their plans for maybe pedestrian and bicycle improvements or transit improvements. So those are some of the things. And I leave, and the, the last uh, thing we want to leave you here is when Mar and I were doing our research, we saw that the 2014 pet and bike plan that was done for dead end. And we were actually quite impressed with this. We thought it was really good. Uh, it has a lot of great connectivity to some of those the destinations that people talk about, things they really enjoy. Uh, about Dedham, like Dedham Square and the, and the you know, East Dedham, the Mother Brook. And we really think that, um, you know, overall, this could be a great network of pedestrian and bicycle connections that could really enhance the town. And so in six years, we just haven't seen a lot done. We realize this, again, this is not unique to Dedham, uh, but what can be done to really to take these plans and really make sure that they're, um, the projects that are uh, envisioned are implemented so that people can really enjoy them and, and add value to their neighborhood. So those are the six goals that we had, um, draft goals. We, we are really excited to get your feedback and thoughts on this. I see there's quite a bit in the chat I'll, I'll look at later. But um, so with that, I'll turn it back over to, I think, Josh or Carolina. Great, thank you, Travis and Mara. Excellent uh, data and draft goals for us to consider. So we're going to follow the same pattern that we did with economic development and uh, I think we might even see, see the same groups that we had previously. So please, uh, Carolina, if that's all set up, send us off to the small groups and we'll uh, follow a similar discussion and, and then join back for a, a quick wrap up afterwards. You may have some new folks or other folks that um, you may not have been. Nancy, I see that you just joined, so I'm going to assign you to a group, okay? So thank you for joining us. And I'm assigning you to a group with different folks. And if Dedham TV could just stay uh, stay with us, thank you. Lawrence, let me know uh, if you're having issues again. I know you weren't able to uh, go into the breakout, so just let me know. Okay, Barbara, let me know if you're having issues or Nancy, you should see um, on your screen, it should say join breakout and you click on that and we'll be in the breakout. Sometimes it, it does it automatically as well. Okay. So Nathan, um, Leah or Leah, let me know how that <laughs> how you say that. Um, if you are trying to join and can't, just let me know.
Nancy, Lawrence, Nathan, let me know if you can't join your breakout. Looks like you've been assigned a breakout room. So if you're having issues, let me know. You can put your question or comment in the chat here if that's easier for you. So we have about 20 or so minutes left in the breakout rooms. So if you need. I don't see any comments in the chat, so I assume folks are away. Um, so I'm just gonna keep video off and um, let me know if I'm here. So Nathan, Nancy, uh, Lawrence, let me know any issues. Um, Nancy, uh, I'll just ask you to unmute so you can let me know if you're having issues, I can help you. Nathan, I'll do the same as well. Oh, looks like you're able to figure it out, Nancy. Great. Nathan, let me know if you're if you need help. Great. Lawrence, I reassigned you, so let me know if you can join the other group.
Nathan, I um, added you to another breakout room. If you'd like to join, um, you should be able to, to join from here.
All right, everybody. So we're going to be getting back here in about three minutes. So as people are joining us once again, I want to welcome people back. Um, Nathan and Lawrence, I'm sorry you were not able to join. Um, but let me know. Hopefully you're able to still participate in the chat and make comments. All right. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't too abrupt and you weren't in sentence, um, but I hope your breakouts were um, fruitful. I know maybe it's sort of like an anticipation waiting to come back. Um, but if folks had other comments that it, they didn't get to, feel free to use the chat and just elaborate more on the comment you were making or anything we might have missed that was mid sentence and wanted to clarify. Facilitators or note takers, feel free to message people individually to get their last thoughts and comments. Um, I know it was kind of a jolt back to the group, uh, but definitely appreciate you all coming back. There is a raffle coming up and a poll. So I know that I'm going to be passing it um, back to our facilitators and um, as well as getting um, Mara and Travis to give us some feedback or comments on uh the breakouts and any reflections before we do our raff our last raffle of the night um so thank you so much um looks like we have a uh poll up um and the question is um did you feel a set of draft recommend uh transportation goals is about right for the master plan uh, feel free to put your answer now in the poll. If you're not able to use it, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, so the options are very close, close, neutral, not close, way off, none of the above. Um, so as things are coming in here, I'll just give it about 30 more seconds and I'm gonna pass it back to Travis and Mara for any comments. Sure. Well, thanks everyone for the comments. I had some really good feedback on our group. Um, we talked quite a bit um, about things such as the commuter rail and you know the, the kind of the some of the reasons why the ridership numbers were there in terms of what we talked about the that and then the traffic on local streets and and also the 34E. Like how can we how can we make sure that that's something that is useful to people? How can we make it more useful? Um, and also, I want to say that it was interesting that we talked a lot about connectivity also in my 
other group on an economic development about how do we make Route One something that is not a barrier for people to get um, in the from one side of Dedham to the other, and how can we make sure people can you know safely who are not driving you know get to the destinations along Route One. So. Um, it's really great to talk to people locally. We get a lot of good feedback about like what's going on on the ground and I really appreciate it. So I don't know if Mara, you have other things you wanted to add to that as well. Sure, um, I had a great group as well. Um, really appreciate a lot of um, really quality feedback on transportation. Um, we had some really uh, fantastic suggestions, for example, around a, a walking path, um, like uh, what Boston has along the Charles River um, along um, sort of on the other side of Route 1. Um, there was a comment about um, really needing better walkability to the commuter line stations um, so that folks can better utilize those on a, an easier, more regular basis. Um, and walkability and bikeability in general in Dedham as well as traffic calming um, is, is a priority for folks. So we had a, we had a great discussion about a number of those uh, topics that I, I think um, were, were definitely things that we all want to incorporate into the master plan. Um, and then we also had some um, strong support for bus rapid transit as well. Great, thank you, Mara and Travis. Now, uh, as promised, we have one, one other uh, local business raffle drawing. So we can hand off to Michelle for that before we just give you some brief concluding remarks. Thanks again, everyone. So for this raffle round, um, it will be a $25 gift card for Harrow's Chicken Pies, as well as the Halfway Cafe. So once again, we'll be doing another raffle and another drum roll for the end of the night. So Robert Deirdroff, I'll be sending you a message again, just uh, letting you know that we will need your contact information and letting, uh, sending you your gift card right away. The next one for the Halfway Cafe, drum rolls. David Roberts, congratulations. So again, I'll be sending you a message and thank you guys so much. Great, thank, thank you, Michelle. Definitely the, the most fun part of the evening and the best graphic, <laughs> that's great. Um, congratulations to all the winners and the local businesses. Uh, so that's fantastic as well. So let me just share my screen real quick and we'll get everyone back to their evenings in short order. Um, there we are. So we just wanted to give everyone a brief reminder about staying involved with this process because we, we had a great attendance uh, at our uh, meeting this evening. Please do RSVP for the January 26th event using that link on the screen and it's also on the website uh, and the March 30th event as well. And we'll have a, a similar setup as this meeting except different topics. Uh, and we hope that you'll lend your uh, knowledge to us that evening as well, those evenings. And if you'd like to join us uh, for a conversation on these topics with the master plan committee, um, please do so. Uh, next week, we'll be talking about natural, cultural, and historic resources in January, community services and facilities and governance, and then wrapping up in February with land use. And then those uh, same topics will show up in the open house sessions also. And if you've seen these posters around town, please do um, drop us a line either through text or by uh, clicking on the QR code with your phone and your photo app. Um, and then you can let us know uh, what the, your response is to some of these prompts. Where does history live in Dedham? What's your story in Dedham? What do your neighbors say about Dedham? Or what are your hopes and dreams? And we're looking at all the feedback that we get through that poster campaign as well. So please do uh, take a look at those around town. And then lastly, um, uh, we definitely refer you to the uh, designingdedham2030.org website. Uh, it is the keeper of all the information analysis and data that's going into this effort um, and would, would be what you should um, refer back to for future events as well as we look to the spring, summer, and fall in 2021. 
So with that, um, we have a little bit of extra time. Actually, we're uh, with this jam-packed agenda even ending before nine o'clock, but rather, rather than um, draw this out too much longer, I think what we'll do is, is let you all return to your evenings a couple minutes early. Um, we will be looking at the chat for comments or questions that have been made uh, and, and inter in integrating those thoughts into our thinking as well. Um, again, another hearty thank you on behalf of the Master Plan Committee, the committee co-chairs, uh, the town staff, and all of us at MAPC um, really do thank you for your time this evening. We know it's always tough to join yet another Zoom meeting, but um, we, we really appreciate the effort of the Denham community to reach out to us. So with that, thank you so much and uh, you're welcome to uh, sign off. We'll, we'll be doing, ending the recording now and then we'll have a few housekeeping items, but please do, uh, you do not need to stick around for all that. Thanks so much, have a good night. Hi everyone, thank you so much.